64 all cleaned up that clear smoke one I picked up the other day as you can see it cleaned up very well it's 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 basically in perfect condition I opened it up cleaned it all out and uh, modified the uh, the piece to play the Japanese games and uh, here we got uh, Diddy Kong's racing it's basically a uh, rares uh, take on a Mario Kart kind of game and uh, as you guys remember, I picked this up from Luke. This is a Japanese N64 game, and uh, it will fit now, and uh, it will play quite fine. All right, guys, we're gonna be doing this video Luke Moore style, and there's a few reasons for that. <laughs> well, actually, there's really only one. Uh, my game bridge, little USB CV tuner or capture device uh, that I use, does not work in Windows 7. Um, same goes with Vista. When Vista came out, uh, there was a lot of TV tuners that, that wouldn't work in Vista. And, uh, you know, this one was kind of built before Vista, and for some of the same reasons, it will not work in Windows 7 tried everything to get it to work and to not get it to work. So for a change, we're doing it uh, Luke Moore style, which hey, it's not that bad and it's definitely nice for a change. Be no editing, a little more uh, unplugged. MN12 bird unplugged. So this is Diddy Kong's Racing, as you can see, or probably can't see unless you can read Japanese. Uh, this is the Japanese version that I got from Luke, who sent me from Japan. Uh, unfortunately, all the menus and stuff in this one are Japanese. Um, so here's your character select. Uh, some of these characters you'll recognize, well, pretty much all of them you'll recognize, but, you know, some of them a little more, some of them I recognize, like Diddy Kong and, uh, that's Banjo Kazooie and the Conquer from Conquer's Bad Fur Day. Um, and I don't know who these other guys from, but apparently they've all been in a game, or at least were supposed to be in a rare game. Can anyone read that? I can't. Or that? <laughs> uh, hey, look, it's Luke. Still got his game on here. <laughs> so this game, it's kind of hard to explain. It's a, a little different than uh, Mario Kart because it has a little bit more of an adventure side to it. And here you can see you can drive around to, to different worlds. And you kind of, um, if you think of the races as levels, You'll do a certain amount of races, and then you'll have basically a boss fight. And it's, it could be like a one-on-one -on -one race or something. And, uh, you know, you've got to progress through the worlds uh, to get more levels. Um, it's kind of hard for me to make out exactly what you're supposed to do, because obviously I can't read any of the menus or any of the instructions or anything like that. I've never played this game before, so... Oddly enough, the names of the levels here are in English. Um, so that's strange enough. Now here you can see you can pick your vehicle. You've got cars, hover cars, or planes. I'm just going to pick the car for this level. If you have the plane, you can fly around, so there's like different areas to the level that you can go that you can't go with the car. So it's pretty unique. I mean, obviously they wanted to add something to this. Uh, so it wasn't a complete Mario Kart clone, and, you know, really that's what this is, is, is it's a Mario Kart kind of clone. You get your power-ups. Power-ups, I don't know, they're not as good as Mario Kart, which overall makes the game maybe not as fun as Mario Kart, but uh, 
you know, it's hard to talk the original. And, uh, you know, Mario Kart obviously is really the best at what it does. And there's a lot of clones. And uh, this is basically Rare's, you know, version of Mario Kart with Rare characters instead of, you know, Nintendo's characters. I'm not sure what that does. If you drop oil, it's similar to, like, dropping a banana peel in Mario Kart. Uh, I'm making this look too easy here. He can drift, which is fun. Like, he can drift craziness. Uh, so here's a quick look at the hover cars. Now, obviously, they slide around a lot more, and they kind of rotate. Oh, they, they handle a little fairly differently than the cars. Um, they can jump instead of drift. They kind of hop up a little bit. That may come in handy in a few parts of the levels, but I don't know. Oh, and they, they go faster across the water, obviously. Like, you know in Mario Kart when you're in the cart and you hit the water and it slows you down so much? Well, the advantage of the hover car, I guess, basically is that you go over the water basically at the same speed that you go over the land on. So once again, there may be like certain levels where there's like water is kind of like a shortcut. Maybe you can, you know, hover over the water. And here's the plane, as you can see, you can fly, which certainly adds, uh, you know, something that Mario Kart never had, and it's, it's, it's definitely fun flying, and some of the levels have, you know, little secrets where you can go up, up through a little shortcut or something. And the speed bursts now are these rings where you gotta fly through the rings and try and get the speed bursts. <coughs> But uh, yeah, it's definitely a, uh, it's a fun game, and uh, you know, obviously it gets compared to Mario Kart a lot. It's probably not as fun as Mario Kart uh, with multiplayer anyways, I wouldn't imagine, but it has a little more of an adventure style gameplay to it with the single player. So it's a little different than Mario Kart there too. And uh... Yeah, and one interesting fact about this game is, uh, it came out, I don't know if I mentioned the date, this game came out, um, late 97. And, uh, when this game came out, I think it was a few years, or a few weeks before Christmas, between then and Christmas, it sold 800,000 copies. It was actually the fastest selling video game ever at that time. I'm sure that there's something that's beat it by now if video games gotten more and more popular. But, uh... For back then, it was the fastest selling video game at the time, and that's actually it, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, so... The game definitely did well, and it eventually became one of Nintendo's, um, what do they call their golden hits or whatever for the N64. Uh, so it was definitely a successful game. And I guess that's it. Oh yeah, the game was also, uh, released on the DS. I guess I should have mentioned that. Uh, 2007, this game was ported to the DS. I'm not sure what exactly was added or whatever, but, uh, yeah. There you go. See you later.